Shalom. Be blessed in Jesus' name. I want to share my testimony on false hair. Beloved, the Bible says in Romans 9:18, "Therefore hath He mercy on whom He will have mercy, and whom He will He pardon." God gave me the grace to survive a powerful experience through my deliverance from my own spirits. Beloved, God speaks in various ways. It's up to you to be able to listen to what God wants to tell you through my testimony. My testimony is short, but I would like you to be available for it. Be blessed through it. May change be evident in your life in Jesus' name. I became born again in 2010. It was the year I decided to give my life to Jesus Christ. Before that, I was a churchgoer, and my life did not conform to the Word of God. During that time, a brother in Christ invited me to a seminar with the theme for women. When I arrived at the seminar, I could feel the tangible presence of God. I never felt such a presence of God. It was mighty, and I could not stop crying. In my heart, I told God that I desire to serve Him. All of a sudden, a lady started prophesying. Even her voice changed to the point that. To date, I have not heard prophecy spoken with such power. The Lord said to this servant, "Woman, why are you crying? Your tears have reached my throne." Then I cheered her. The presence of God consumed me, and I did not stop crying. I, I felt His love. His love consumed me. When the woman of God kept preaching, I could not stop falling from my chair. Each time I wanted to sit, I was projected from my chair to the ground. In seeing this, the woman of God came to me. She came to pray for me. While she was praying for me, God revealed to her that it was a marine spirit manifesting. The woman of God took the anointing oil and laid her hands on me. It was unsuccessful. This spirit did not want to leave. I was shocked because I wondered what type of spirit is this. I had the feeling of being one with that spirit, as if I belonged to it, and I felt like an effect of love. When the woman of God was driving it, I had the impression as if something was pulling her toward me. It was like a magnetic force, like when a magnet pulls a metal towards it. That's how I was feeling. Despite the deliverance prayer, the laying on of hands, the anointing oil, and the anointing on this sister, I was not getting delivered. I was exhausted, and at the end of the day, the woman of God came to see me, and she had a lot of compassion for me. But God did not reveal to her why I was not getting delivered. Beloved, this woman of God did not lack anointing or the power of God. But God did not allow my deliverance because He wanted to teach me something. So I left the seminar without receiving any deliverance. On my way home, I was ex- escorted by two brothers and sisters in the Lord. All of a sudden, a mighty voice spoke. I was the only one who could hear this voice. This powerful voice told me, "You did not receive your deliverance because of the false hair on your head." Remove the false hair, and you receive your deliverance. I did not think twice. I pulled my wig. It was a removable wig, so it was easy to take it off. At that moment, we were outside, but I did not care. I was desperate for my deliverance. That I removed it that second, that very moment. I took authority over the marine spirit in the wig to release me, and that. Moment, I was delivered. The marine spirit left me. After this, the voice I heard previously continued talking to me. It was a powerful, audible voice that I alone could hear. I was afraid and told the brothers and sisters that I was hearing a voice talking to me. At that moment, the voice said, "Do not be afraid. It is me, your eternal God, talking to you." Then I told myself, "If God is talking to me," That means my hour has come. 
So the Lord told me, stop. So I told the Lord, sorry. Stop talking to me or else I will die. I did not feel worthy to hear God's voice, but the Lord answered, no, you will not die. Beloved, the presence of God is such that I, it was such that I, he, I, I just wanted to hide, for I was dressed indecently. I felt ashamed. When we came back home, the first thing I wanted to do was to change my dressing. I did not want to wear any tight clothing. I looked for loose clothes. And the Lord continued to talk to me. In referring to my daughter, the Lord reprimanded me, saying, Why did you put false hair on the head of my, do- my servant? Remove it immediately from her head. The Lord told me never to put it on her head, and I obeyed at that very moment. I removed the attached braids from my daughter's head. Now I want to clarify something. I put synthetic braids on my daughter's head and I had a blend of, of uh, synthetic and natural hair on my head. I want to call the attention of mothers who put false hair on the heads of their daughters. God will ask us to give an account. Yes. Repent and let God strip you. Submit yourself to God. The Lord continued to visit me for three days. And he opened my spiritual eyes to the point that I could see spirits hiding behind each person. But that would be a a testimony for another day. God willing, I would share this other testimony. Since then, the Lord continued to strip me. And I could no longer wear earrings, makeup, trousers and indecent clothes that expose my body. I could no longer wear clothes with images such as monkeys, dead person's heads, or a head of someone, or the head of a Barbie or of a cartoon, because I could see spirits hiding behind each image. This is why we should pray for what we buy. Most of the things we buy are spiritually polluted. The Lord taught me to dress simply, sober, and modest. Beloved, the Bible says in Romans 2.11, For there is no respect of persons with God. God does not love me more than you. If God says that something is bad for me, it will also be bad for you. If He says something is good for me, it will also be good for you. For we are all called to live a sanctified life. We should not only cleanse the inside of the cup, but the outside as well. The outside should reflect who we are in the inside. Beloved, many would be amazed at not being able to enter the kingdom of heaven on the day of judgment. Many think that God only looks at the heart. Beloved, your outward aspect is also important. All your being must glorify God, body, soul, and spirit, and nothing should be neglected. Performing miracles, healings, deliverance by God's grace does not guarantee us access to the kingdom of heaven. We must lead a life of sanctification and holiness without which no one will see God. Do not harden your heart, but be sensitive to the Spirit of God. Be blessed in Jesus' name.